Okay, let's get started. Welcome everyone. We are so excited that you're tuning in today for our class on how to apply mindfulness to affect real habit change. Whether you're tuning in live or listening later to our recorded version from our website, I'm happy you're joining us today. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Beth. I am a dietitian at Livia and also our Director of Nutrition. You've likely heard that there's different stages of change, but no matter where you are in that spectrum, our goal is that when you leave here, you will be armed with several approaches you can walk through on your own to examine whatever behaviors you believe might be holding you back and that you can apply these strategies right away. So if you're contemplating making a change, you'll have tools to apply when you're ready. And if you're ready to try something different related to your behaviors right now, today, that's fantastic. You'll have those tools to get started. And while this class can relate to losing weight and keeping it off, the same tools and approach also apply more broadly to other wellness goals, such as improved stress management, more time with our families, or even less screen time. All those things that make us feel better and able to face the day as our best selves. Okay, let's look at what we'll be covering today. First, we'll actually start our mindfulness journey by looking at mindlessness. Then we'll look at how our behaviors are formed and knowing this can help us identify how to approach changing them. Next, we'll look at habits and explore something called the habit loop. Then we'll get to the bottom of mindfulness as well as willpower including some research suggesting there are three different types of willpower and that approaching it this way can help us change our behaviors. We've designed a worksheet to accompany this webinar and it will be available on our website to download shortly. You'll see that towards the end we'll put all these pieces I just mentioned together so that when you leave today you'll already have a plan of action and know where to dig in related to your health goals. Okay, so it might seem a little strange if you're listening at your desk at work with colleagues all around you, or even if you're all alone on your own, own at home, but I encourage you to raise your hand if any of the following questions apply to you. Okay, everybody ready? How many of you have been on the weight loss roller coaster? How many of you know how to eat healthy but can't seem to follow through? I'm seeing some raised hands even virtually, I love it. How often have you been in a situation where it was your intention to make a healthy choice or to stick to your plan and then you find yourself doing the complete opposite? I don't know about you, but I know my hand was raised for all three of those questions. So whether you physically raised your hand or virtually raised your hand, the one thing you need to know is you are not alone. And there's even better news. There is hope. Many people who lose weight on a program gain it back. We can set new goals frequently, but to have it be real lasting change, we need those necessary tools to keep the weight off or to stick with our path. Those tools and awareness that can give us long-term success. And that's what today's class is really all about. Most of us know what to do, how to eat, but something's getting in the way of us being successful. So we wanna give you strategies so that you'll learn what to look for and also know how to approach changing your behavior. There's a lot of talk of mindfulness these days and it means different things to each of us. But let's take a step back and first start by talking about what it isn't. Think about those things you do almost without thinking throughout your day. They're called automatic behaviors. But where do these behaviors these mindless habits that make up our day and ultimately our actions come from. I'm sure many of you have heard of Pavlov's dog experiment. The bell he rang became the cue that started the dog to crave or to salivate a predicted reward to come. Well, guess what? That same type of conditioning works for us as humans too, for better or worse. And for many of us, our relationship with food in certain situations with certain stimuli or those cues that are present works in much the same way. And we repeat these behaviors often enough that it becomes unconscious as if we're on autopilot. To bring about change, we need to take stock of the things we're doing throughout our day that are a result of conditioning. And many of them have been going on so long we're not even aware of how they started, but that's okay. 
So think about some of the places where you feel like you're on autopilot with your food or other health related goals, such as certain social situations or eating habits when you're at work or when you're at home, like in front of the TV. That's what we really need to learn how to deal with because it isn't a knowledge thing, it's ultimately a behavior thing. It's almost impossible to pick up a magazine or newspaper or turn on a news show lately without hearing the term mindfulness. I've even seen full periodicals devoted to mindfulness. I heard my mom on the phone the other day use the term mindfulness. Typically, it is mentioned alongside practices such as yoga or meditation, activities that allow us to be more present and in the moment. But what is mindfulness and why does it even matter for us? Being mindful can help us in many aspects of our life and it is something to aspire to. And while it can be practicing yoga or meditation, absolutely, it doesn't have to look like that. Today, we are primarily going to look at mindfulness as it applies to lasting behavior change by applying those principles of being centered and present that we just discussed. So before we go deeper into how it relates to habits, let's take a moment to ground ourselves in some of the important tenets of mindfulness as they relate to our health and wellness, such as surrounding ourselves with actions and habits that provide meaning in our life, being present in the moments of our lives, using breathing and meditation. It's easy to see how this could make a big difference when it comes to our eating habits, just slowing down and savoring every bite defining our purpose and using it to guide us towards action with more meaning for us personally, eliminating distractions and disconnecting, putting down those electronics. All of this allows us to fully experience our meal and those sensory inputs of our food, such as taste, visual appeal, and smell, so that we're more likely to be satisfied by what's in front of us and not go looking elsewhere. Practicing self-compassion and giving ourselves a little bit of grace working to turn off, to turn off our self-criticism and judgment and just be gentle to ourselves. We'll circle back to this concept of being more accepting of where we are in our journeys in a bit. Charles Duhigg is a New York Times reporter and author who wrote a book called The Power of Habit about why we make the decisions we do. For example, thinking about your own life, when you got up this morning, what did you do first? Did you put on your bathrobe? Did you head to the kitchen for coffee? What did you have for lunch? Is it the same thing you have every day? Do you take the same route to work every day? What sneaker do you tie first? Habits are those behaviors that we do so often, we do them without thinking and we might not even be aware of them. Charles Duhigg himself found that every afternoon he got up from his desk at work, took the elevator to the cafeteria and had a chocolate chip cookie. He really enjoyed the chocolate chip cookie. He did this with such regularity that he gained eight pounds. This made him wonder about why he was doing this and why this had become a habit for him. And more importantly, how to break it, which is where we can benefit from what he uncovered. He captured the components of, the, of his habit and all of our habits as three things, the cue or the trigger, the routine, the behavior itself, for him it was going upstairs to have the cookie, and the reward, which initially he thought was the cookie itself. With experimentation and trying many different things and being aware, what he learned was it wasn't about the cookie as a reward at all. For him, he realized what he was craving was socializing. Simply breaking away from his desk and chatting with colleagues, he found that as long as he satisfied that craving or reward, getting that socialization, he no longer needed the cookie. And he lost 12 pounds. Our brain loves habits. These habits developed out of need and they are a good thing for us. As a matter of fact, our brain is a superb pattern detector and predictor. It's what allows us to put certain things on autopilot so that it can focus on other more important things. All of our habits, desirable or not, have a loop. As Charles Duhigg proposes in his book, a habit loop is made up of three key parts, the cue, the routine, and the reward. The cue is the trigger to go into autopilot mode. It can be anything. 
The routine is the mental, physical, or emotional action you take in response to that cue. And the last part of the loop is the reward. Our brains are always seeking to find pleasure or to avoid pain. This and this just reinforces the action. And if the loop is worth remembering because we found pleasure, this habit loop becomes strengthened over time. When we're looking to change a habit, we tend to focus on the routine, but we should be focusing on instead are the cue and the reward. The cue or that trigger is not always easy to identify, but when you feel the habit coming on, ask yourself, what is the real craving driving this routine that I'm investigating? It can be any one of these things. If your cue is stress, find new ways to deal with stress. If your cue is boredom, find new ways to keep yourself busy. Decide your plan of action ahead of time. Another takeaway is that there's no one way to change a habit. It's different for everyone and it's likely going to require experimentation, just like Charles, du excuse me, Charles Duig's. But the good news is that by deciding to make a change, we can actually interrupt this habit loop and break that circuit. The other interesting thing about habits is they cannot be wiped out. What we have to do then is replace the old habit or routine with a new one, one that supports you and your goals. There are different ways to change a habit, but ultimately what it comes down to is creating and practicing new skills. When we foster new skills, we're able to change our habit routines, which in turn become our behaviors. So how can we make this behavior change process work for us personally? We do this by, by following what we call the three A's. The first is awareness. You have to become aware of what you're doing or what your goal is. You can't follow through on a decision to change a behavior or lifestyle without realizing you have a behavior to change in the first place. It sounds simple, but a bit of just applying that personal honesty and awareness really makes a difference. Second, acceptance. Accept that this is where you're at in terms of where you wanna be, whether that's creating healthier habits, losing weight, quitting smoking, spending less time on our phone, whatever it is for you. Whatever your journey may entail, acknowledge that you can't go back and change the past or how you came to be where you are, but what you can control is where you go from here. Part of this is also in asking yourself, what is getting in my way? Identify what's keeping you from accomplishing your goals. What must you overcome? And lastly, action. Act in the most effective way for you to achieve your goals. We often struggle because we're so focused on the target or goal and not our everyday actions. A good place to start is by creating a plan of action and fostering skills that are going to reinforce our new habit. And that worksheet I discussed in the beginning, that will, um, that will really help you make some headway there. To successfully bridge the gap from intention to action, creating a roadmap can help. There are a few other key components to building these core skills. First, involve other people. Whether it's for support or accountability or both, involving those who you can trust to help cheer you up, cheer you on when things are going really well and celebrate with you, but also be there to pick you up when things are tough, just can help you really stay consistent. Next, create intentional cues. This may be a visual like a post-it or a picture in a place where you may be vulnerable to falling into old habits, such as a post-it or another vis visual on the fridge or pantry cabinet. It can work as a physical barrier between you and that place of vulnerability, just to give you that moment of pause before you proceed. Think about adding notifications on your phone to remind you to practice your new skill, like a water reminder app. And as most of us know, there's an app for almost everything these days. Take advantage of physical reminders around your house. Some examples are to set an alarm to go out for a walk every day and put your shoes by the door to signal your brain to put them on for a walk um, when you come home from work because that walk is so important to you. Or for drinking more water, keep a glass set out on the counter for the water so you're reminded to drink that every morning when you wake up. Whatever it is to works for you. And to be honest, you'll likely need to try several things until you find exactly what fits. Next, persevere. 
There are studies in schools of thought, different studies in schools of thought about how long it takes to change a habit. Most say at least 21 days, but I've seen some studies suggest as long as 60 days. The key is that it takes time, but that's okay. We've got time. The habit you're striving to change took time to develop, and it will take time until the new routine takes its place. Time and patience. Also, consistently envision your success and remember to reward yourself. It's also important to give yourself reminders of your success throughout the process. Celebrating these important milestones will keep you engaged and motivated along the way. And last but not least, write it down. It's scientifically proven that people who write down their goals are more likely to achieve them. It helps to take a thought and make it more concrete. Give us a connection to it. Write down your goal and your plan of action and your motivation. If you're a Livia client with us, this is something you've heard us encourage a lot, the power of pen to paper for accountability to our goals. It truly does make a difference. Okay, so we've talked about how new skills and changing a habit routine can lead to changed behavior, but where does willpower come in? In our visits, we often hear, I just wish I had more willpower. Most of us think we should just be strong enough to say no to those tempting foods in our life. Shouldn't we just have the willpower to stay strong to achieve our goals? They're important to us. We tend to beat ourselves up believing we could be successful if we just had more willpower. Many of us do this, but there's a different way to look at willpower. Kelly McGonigal, a Stanford University psychologist, wrote a book called The Willpower Instinct. She talks about three types of willpower. Professor McGonagall believes there is, I won't power, the power we use to resist the various temptations in our lives. For example, um, resisting late night snacking while we're watching TV. I will power, the power we use to do those tough things to accomplish our goals. For example, such as working out, cleaning our homes, remembering to floss. Also, she believes there's, I want power. And this is the most important part, the part of the brain that remembers our long-term goals and dreams and desires. It's what we really want. To harness this powerful power and to accomplish your goals, you need to give as much fuel to your I want power as possible. It reminds us why we're resisting the temptation in the first place. And over time, with continued practice, the power to resist becomes more natural because you're building a new routine, a new behavior, and our cravings become less powerful. I encourage you to challenge yourself to increase your I want power. You have to really give it some thought and try to define what it is you want. Our Livia clients often hear us describe this as keeping your why close. The more clearly defined your goal and motivation, the easier it is to make those tough choices throughout the day. And then they just become more natural. Just saying no, what we typically think of as our willpower on its own, is an effect of long term. It alone is not strong enough to give us success. It alone doesn't give us the power to say no to those temptations. But when we pair it with our I want power, holding our why close, or visualizing what we want to achieve as an even greater reward, then it makes our I will power stronger. Okay, so how can we make this behavior process, change process work for us? With the right tools and yes, practice, you can reach your goals and change your behaviors. To put all these pieces together, we designed a worksheet that will walk you through getting started today on these habits, or whenever you're ready, the tool will be there for you. It's designed to walk you through step-by-step -step the three A's we discussed. Awareness, what is your goal? acceptance, identifying what your cues or triggers are, as well as where you need support, and action, making a commitment to put your plan into action. As you download the worksheet from our website, once we get it posted, I wanna point out that it includes a completed example on the back of the sheet, in case you need either a refresher of what we've covered today, or some ideas just to get you started with that brainstorming. And I encourage you to give it some thought and, and time and to give yourself time to truly brainstorm and get creative with different approaches to try. 
That's the only way you're gonna figure out what ultimately is the best fit for you and your life. This is much like Charles Duhigg experimented with why he was eating the chocolate chip cookie every afternoon. You, like the author I'm guessing, might be surprised at what you uncover. But also like his example, it often takes multiple tries to get to the real answer. So don't give up, just keep trying. And also remember to enjoy the process along the way. As we're working on changing habits, I wanna talk for a moment about goal setting. You've probably heard the term SMART goals. Uh, most of us have heard that in our work or personal life, emphasizing the importance of being as specific as possible when we're setting our goal. I'm sure many of you have heard of Harvey McKay. He's a Twin Cities businessman who is known, among other things, for his inspirational quotes and advice. He was also instrumental in building the Metrodome in downtown Minneapolis. As you can imagine, working on a complex project such as the Metrodome, it has many stages and facets before it's complete and fully operational. Someone once asked him how he would know when it was complete, managing a complex project like that. And what he said really made an impression on me. He's rumored as saying, I'll know it is complete when I'm sitting in a seat in the Metrodome watching a Twins game. To this day, when my husband and I talk about an upcoming goal or a project we're working on, we ask each other, what is your Harvey McKay moment? If we take that example related to our own goals, we, an example would be, we might start with a goal of, I wanna spend more time with my family. Obviously that's a very good goal, but better and more specific would be, I wanna have more quality time with my family in the evening after supper. Okay, we're getting a little more specific, but better still would be, I wanna turn off the TV put down our phones and have game night with my family after supper every Monday night. You can hear the difference, I'm sure. It's so specific, you can actually imagine yourself there in that moment, sitting around the kitchen table with your family, like Harvey McKay in his seat at the Twins game. And the more crystallized that vision, the less that you're gonna let something get in the way of that. When you pair a well-defined goal with a fully realized, crystallized vision of your motivation, you will truly be unstoppable. Okay, so as we think about all these concepts together, we start with some introspection. You need to ask yourself what behaviors you wanna work on and decide where to start and apply the tools that we discussed today. Keep at it. It is an iterative process. It takes time and practice. This practicing builds confidence and helps you discover what fits for you. Think of these new habits as trying them on to see if they fit. If it doesn't work, you're, you're not trying out the process or the goal, you're just trying another habit to see if it fits better. And just doing this is progress and it will make a difference for you. And don't forget to accept and ask for help. Your Livia team and your support structure you've built in your own life are an important part of this. Prepare for the tough times. If you have a clear plan of action, you can work through it and have that crystallized, clear vision of what you're working towards, your I want power, and keeping that why close. Remember, a successful day might not be a perfect day. Always strive for success, not perfection. It does take time, focus, and persistence, but this will make a difference and start to build those new habits and routines. And of course, remember to have fun in the process. That is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm grateful you're able to join us. We're excited to learn during your weekly visits what you're committed to working on, or at least contemplating working on. We're there either way for you. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day, everybody.